Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be talking about the Abyss, why I think the Abyss is so good and also the potential for battleships and battle cruisers um, in the Abyss in the future. So first and foremost this is obviously my opinion so take it all with a grain of salt. This is more of a, uh, a general discussion and a look at why I think the Abyss is great and um, basically we're going to look at the pros and the cons as they currently are. Now, one of the great things about the Abyss is that you have six levels of difficulty, obviously starting from particularly easy all the way up to incredibly hard. And I, I like this. I like the fact that the Abyss is really easy to access and it is made for an entire range of people from, obviously, people that are literally just getting going to all the way to your, your seasoned vets who have billions of this that they can pour into it. And so therefore this is really good design that it's open to pretty much everybody that can um, fly a ship. So the secondary point that I really enjoy about the Abyss is the fact that it is very varied. Obviously you know roughly what you're getting into but each room is semi-unique um, and again it, it allows you to be able to plan for obviously the weather types and the type of filament that you're going into but it also has a, a good randomness about it that it keeps you on your toes and it, it yeah, it does get a bit repetitive after so long, but in regards to missions which are exactly the same other than the type of mission um, in the Abyss, obviously it's a lot more varied and I think that again is a really good design feature of the Abyss. Thirdly, the thing I really like about the Abyss is that it's kind of self-regulating in regards to prices. So the filaments that are generally easier than some of the others, i.e. the electrical, obviously in a free market sell for more because more people are doing them. Whereas the darks, on the other hand, or the firestorms, in comparison, sell for, uh, where are we, chaotic, much, much less. And that is generally because A, they're harder, B, you know, you need different types of ships where the gila is pretty much great for doing the electricals, etc. Where, obviously, the darks need a different type of ship. And this is A, harder to get into, and it does make sometimes the... Uh, these filaments a lot harder and therefore it's reflected in the price so I like the fact that obviously um, the market kind of dictates how much or how much profit potentially you can make from each run and being self-regulated in regards to that again is a really good design feature. Another thing about the Abyss is that it's generally a relatively straightforward but there are always the rooms that are going to test you and obviously people do ships and ships by the dozen and again it's a the reward is there to encourage you to push yourself. You know, if you can do the higher filaments, then the rewards can be very rewarding. But obviously, the risk therefore increases. And so, there, the fact that there is obviously quite a lot of destruction as well in regards to um, the abyssal sites is really good for the whole Eve in general. It means more things are blowing up. The people are obviously recouping their costs. And this has also seen a massive increase in items that weren't necessarily particularly popular before. So the small remote armor reps and shield reppers, uh, because these are used on repair ships for the uh, the frigate size for the Abyss. So this is really good news for everybody, because any, anything that stimulates the EVE economy and gets things rolling and moving has to be a good thing. And again, people enjoy doing the Abyss. That's why, obviously, there's so many people do it. If we look, there's currently 385 people currently in the air. Abyssal Alerka's um, channel at the moment. So, you know, there are a huge amount of people doing this because, again, it's it pays well. It's relatively interesting. It's varied enough to keep you on your toes. And if you get bored of the filaments that you're doing and you are able to fly over ships, then there are lots of options. And trying to get to the higher level Abyss sites means that you have to either really copy somebody else's... Um, fit that they've already done or you can go out and do your own and again that leaves a lot of scope for basically people putting in time and effort to to really theory craft and to hone their ship to you know to the point where they feel that it's pretty much spot on for doing the abyssal sites so one area where i feel that ccp fell down slightly and that is with the triglavian data sheets and this is because basically these are sold to npcs and in regards to that they actually bring in isk to the game and obviously, as we know, over the last year, CCP have been trying to get away from, you know, ISK faucets um, and trying to find ISK sinks. So all you've done potentially is move people away from zero zero doing the abyss. And instead of bringing in the bounties there, which can be now got at um, from 
basically people reading the uh, I can't remember what they're called ECS or whatever but basically that can be got out where this can't other than ganking somebody coming out of the abyss so uh, I'd say I'd like this nerfed isn't quite the way I'd go about it but I think basically they could do with toning it down slightly and maybe adding um, more filaments or whatever um, ship materials or just something to try and balance it out and again just think that it wasn't great having it being able to be sold to NPCs and bringing in extra risk to the game. Now, all in all, I'm not going to get into the debate of whether multiplasmids are good or bad. I do agree that basically the, the trying to find multiplasmid um, items on the market can be painful at the best of times. So, yeah, we're, I, again, we're, how you'd go about implementing that in a better way is for probably a different discussion and not for this one. Now, I was flying the Varga back after building a few the other day, and I realised this is a, an absolutely gorgeous ship. I don't know whether it's just I like the uh, the Tempest model in general or the uh, the camo on it, but flying it back from obviously building it, and I was just, just admiring how fantastic this ship looks. I don't know whether it's the soft spot I have for Mimitar ships or, or what, or whether it is just absolutely spectacular. I just love this ship. I uh, forgot how great it looked. I've not flown one of these for a long time, but I think that is absolutely stunning. And that brings me nicely on to the next point of battle cruiser and battleship sized abyss sites. Now, personally, I would really like to see this, um, and I think they could implement this a few ways. So at the moment, you kind of have the natural progression that if there's frigates, it takes three filaments. If there's destroyers, it takes two filaments. And if it's a cruiser, it takes one filament. So the natural progression with that would be that obviously for battle cruisers, it would take half a filament. And for battleship, it would take a quarter of a filament. Obviously, that's not going to work. So we need a different way of doing it. Now, you could have um, the current filaments uh, or the, the cruiser to frigates have drop more specific uh, filaments that only battle cruisers and battleships could do. And you could do it that way. Um, and obviously in the battleship and battle cruiser um, sites that you're doing they would drop specific sites or you could just have a completely new line of filaments entirely but um, same way that obviously it started with the, the, the current set because obviously it took the market some time so you can have literally battlement, uh, battleship filaments that you can only get in battleship or battle cruiser sites and again just a, a set specifically for battleships and battle cruisers and keep the current um, filaments as they are intact. And I think, again, that would be great for EVE. It would help stimulate the economy in regards to battleships, etc. The only issue that we currently have, or I currently see it as an issue, whether it is or not is non-issue, is the fact that Marauders have just been buffed, and considerably. So, as it currently stands, obviously Marauders have by far the highest DPS of any battleship, and just... Limit, limiting it to a handful of battleships which would probably be the best battleships to do them would be a pretty bad design so I don't know how you would get around that obviously for battle cruisers it's a whole new level of uh, of working but yeah for battleships I don't know how you'd go around it because the idea is that you don't just want four ships which are the best ships um, you know it's, it's nice that people can use a whole range of ships although again for the abyss I suppose most people do only use a handful of ships for each type of filament so would it really matter again I'm not sure but you would get literally the exact same ships just running the sites but then the filaments would go up so that therefore it would force people to use other sites or other ships potentially so yeah there's, there's a bit of scope there i don't know quite how it would work or again how you would implement it uh so basically the marauder isn't just the single best ship to go to and nothing can compete with it in regards to obviously dps etc so that's something to think about and yeah again i'm, I'm not going to try and work out what or how that's going to work I also think long term that CCP should be taking a, and I hope they are, I hope they're taking a serious look at the abyssal sites and thinking of other ways of rolling out similar um, PVE for EVE. Now, obviously, we've got the abyss, so you can obviously do it in completely different ways uh, in regards to missions, etc. Now, I wouldn't touch the current missions. Some people do like the repetitiveness of missions and that's their thing. But you could obviously have a completely different line of missions that are more... I know you've got the burner missions, but I'd like to see something more along the lines of the Abyssal sites that are self-sustaining and um, 
the rewards they drop basically fuel itself. So it's almost it's a closed little economy, the abyssal items and stuff that drop, because obviously the money, the isk that you make from the filaments, you're then selling to uh, more abyssal runners and so on and so on. The uh, stuff that drops as well uh, in regards to the multiplasmids, yes, go to other people, but you've also got the materials to build the Triglavian ships, which again come from the abyssal sites, as well as the blue BPCs, etc. So I quite like the fact that it's kind of self fueling and it's kind of tied up in itself. So you could do another line of missions that are very, very similar to it, but in a different kind of vein. Um, you know, instead of being Triglavian, obviously it would be. Uh, your current factions that you're fighting against but with the randomness that comes with the abyssal sites i think that would make it a lot more interesting and keep people engaged and i again i think again i've got <laughs> just a bit pulling this out of the air but I, I think the abyssal sites are quite engaging and anybody that tries them it you know it's it's good content where missions become very stale relatively quickly if you've done them for any length of time where the abyssal sites i'm now up to two and a half thousand that i've run so far and i still enjoy doing it now granted it does get a bit repetitive but as i said earlier on there's always that moment that you want to push yourself you can either you know you can cruise through a t2 really really easy and have pretty much no chance of losing your ship unless you get disconnected which they could do with sorting out um but you're not going to earn a great deal of isk, whereas obviously when you start pushing yourself into some of the higher tiers, there is a lot more isk potential, but that obviously that increases the risk. And you could do that quite nicely for missions that you've got that level of risk where you're making enough isk that, you know, if you can keep your ship alive for five, six hours, then it pays for itself and everything else is just gravy on top. But there is that risk of losing your ship, where in current missions at the moment, unless you make a horrible mistake, it's nigh on impossible to lose your ship. You know, you can warp out pretty much at any time. Uh, there's very few frigates. No, I would say very few, but there's there's not many frigates that will come and scramble you, where obviously in the Abyss you are locked in there. And you could have this more in missions that, again, instead of being in a dead space pocket where you, you've got a certain amount of time before everything goes boom, you just have, you know lots and lots of things that can scramble scramble you down so basically it's still the same principle you're still locked in place until you kill these things uh, but you can't just warp out at any time or there's only two frigates in the entire mission line that can scram you and that basically they're the first things that you kill so you can get out if things start going south and this therefore brings back the whole destruction and self-perpetuating nature of the game that obviously we need more things blowing up so people can build things so you know but it has to it has to be worth it or people just won't do it and you know you could do it again with with um zero zero anomalies you can make them more in now zero zero is a bit more interesting because obviously people can get at you a lot easier and you don't want to be scrambled because again you get that problem where people aren't going to do it because it becomes too dangerous so uh, i don't know keep anomalies etc like they are but I would like to see this more implemented in other areas of the game just to liven things up. And again, you don't necessarily have to have a huge payout. It could take, you know, it could take a good while to pay it off, but every so often you're going to run into that spawn that you just, you know, when you just get hyper unlucky that you, you know, you're, you're in a lot of trouble and therefore, you know, you're likely to lose a ship. And that keeps, you know, makes it interesting, it keeps you on your toes and it gives you that level of risk and that kind of enjoyment that level you know what's the point in running missions if it's literally just a grind disc you 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 a mindless drone and that you know that's why it becomes boring where in the the abyss you're always on your toes you're always looking at the timer the um randomness of it you know means that if you get unlucky you know it can be a hell of a time and you know it keeps you on your toes you know when you're you're bleeding into structure and you're like oh no this is it or you're about to go out of bounds because you've hit one of the speed clouds or you get karen and she's in one of the um the tracking areas you know you're in for a rough ride and that's what you know it's one of those moments where you pull your seat up to your computer a bit more and you you focus in a bit more and you stop you know messing around on the other monitor or doing other things because you know it's just got serious and you need to you need to concentrate or you are going to die and so that is generally why I really, really like the Abyss and would like to see it rolled out to some other areas in the game. And again, 
you know, I'd like to hear everybody else's thoughts on this just to see whether, you know, everybody else agrees because, again, you know, I'm sure there are people out there that absolutely love missions and would be horrified if CCP touched it and, you know, probably hate the abyss. And, you know, in regards to the disconnect of the abyss, they could do with obviously looking at different ways of sorting that out uh, because that is horrific. If you uh, disconnect, that pretty much you, you're a goner, and that could literally set you back billions, depending on what you're doing. But yeah, I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts if you've managed to make it this far on you know what, what you think to the abyss or the idea of missions that are more abyssal kind of based, um, but without, as I said, the timers, etc. So you know it's not quite as stressful or um, intense. Because not everybody has 20 minutes that they can just sit down and, and grind something out. You know, sometimes you've got to leave the computer for whatever reason. Um, children, wives, girlfriends, emergencies. And, you know, I've <laughs> done it numerous times where I've had to say to my wife, yep, yeah, I've got 10 minutes, I can't leave, you'll just have to wait. And, you know, she's been raging at the door and it's like, well, this is fun. You know, and you're kind of trapped because, well, you know, I don't want to lose five, six, seven hours worth of uh, ship work here um, for, for three minutes, whatever it is that you're asking me to do. So, yeah, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this in general. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up there. So I thank you for your time. If you haven't subscribed, then please do think about it. Uh, I don't usually do things like this. This is more of a debate subject. So uh, check out some of the other content that I have if you want to... Uh, stick around. So with that, thanks for your time. I'll talk to you again later.